Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to my channel here on YouTube, Love and Guiding Light. I am Keisha, and I am here to bring you messages uh, that I've gotten here for the last couple of days. I've been having a lot of um, synchronized numbers showing up on my path, as well as animals, um, well not animals, I guess, uh, toads and snails. So bugs and um, yeah, toad, uh, toads, um, which is the cousin of frogs. Um, numbers, I've had uh, so many synchronized numbers just coming up. So I did write down um, some things uh, from what I received from those numbers. I hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Today is uh, August 17th and it's 212, another synchronized number. So let me see what that is. We're gonna look that one up right now, 212. So, the energy around us right now, there's so much going on around us in the world. Um, I'm lifting up um, Maui in prayer as well as the people in Ukraine. Um, in my opinion, both of these situations are man-made. I believe that the war is something that, you know, our government um, wants to be in for their own um, reasons. Um, I know a lot of you probably agree with me and are not um, happy about the war as I am not um, unnecessary in my opinion. And again, like I said, this is something they want to partake in. And the fire in Maui, my gut, my intuition, my feelings is that fire was something that was done intentionally. Um, and if you are following all that is transpiring with that, um, then you have heard of the stories in which is coming out. Of course, they're saying conspiracy theory, but you know, that's always what they say on these situations is because they want to try to distract people um, from really, you know, looking into to what's going on and whatnot. However, I just always tell people to do their own research um, and also to believe in what you're feeling in your spirit in regards to these situations. Um, my spirit tells me that that fire was intentionally set, that that was not um, the doing of Mother Nature. Okay, so, and it's odd that there's a book out already published two days after the fire started. So the fire started on the 8th and there was a pu book published to Amazon for sale. Um, fire and Fury is I think the name of the book, which is uh, just, you know, unbelievable because how could the book have been written um, in, in, within that matter of time and then re and published in, in a matter of two days? It's just not possible. You know, I don't believe in coincidences and um, I believe that, you know, things happen and they come into play because they were uh, already planned in my opinion, you know, so they have been trying to get that land for some time now um, in Maui uh, to make it a smart, um, smart, like a smart area. Everything will be uh, basically uh, smart based, you know, so and it was said that back a few months ago that that same area that caught fire, they had um, arrested a, a couple of people trying to set fire to that area. 
So to me, yeah, that just don't make sense. Y'all arrested someone back a few months ago trying to set fire to that exact location um, in Maui. And then uh, conveniently, now they have this massive fire um, that's burnt a great deal of Maui to the ground. And um, it's just unbelievable. And my prayers are with them. Um, with all my brothers and sisters there and I'm praying that the truth is unveiled to everyone what caused the fire they said it was the dew um, laser beam that is you know with NASA outer space you may want to do your research on that if you have any interest even though Maui is not where I'm from and I'm not there and no, and you probably aren't either and you know However, we are all connected in everything that happens to one of our brothers and sisters is going to be impactful. I mean, we're going to feel that. Like, we feel that. My heart breaks for them, you know. And it's just that when I was tuning in to different channels in regards to it, I was just like, man, I just can't believe how diabolical the government is and the things in which they will do to take ownership of people's land and property. It's just unbelievable. However, it's been happening for hundreds and hundreds of years. They've done it to the aboriginals. They've taken their lands. They've taken the Native American land. You know, if you're familiar with any of the stories with a lot of lakes and so forth in different states. I live in Georgia, Lake Lanier. Um, once upon a time, what was it called? Um, Jesus, I can't think of the name. It's on the tip of my tongue. But it was um, a prominent area where, you know, black people owned that land out there in Lake Lanier. And something awful happened in the 1900s, early 1900s, with some woman um, had supposedly had been, you know, raped and such. And they had, you know, arrested two black males. Uh, all in one day was able to arrest and convict and I believe they eliminated them forgive me I mean like oh my god just all in one day and then set fire to a lot of the area there to run off the rest of those people in that area and then took that land and, that, and flooded it flooded it never tore down any of the properties or anything like that you know but they flooded the areas the churches the homes and everything which is now known as Lake Lanier so a lot of people go out on Lake Lanier and they are you know on the the lake fishing and doing all these different things and they're having all these odd and crazy um, occurrences there lots of deaths drownings everything um, happen in that lake you know it, there is a whole city <laughs> underneath Lake Lanier I know that just seems you know odd to believe but it is you can do your research I can't remember the name of it it's on the tip of my tongue and if I do I will actually you know put it somewhere um, perhaps on my community board but and that, that's not the only lake. There's many lakes. There's lakes all over the globe and many cities that that has happened to. You know, and they just take ownership and they make it their own and they do what they want and don't think there's consequences. However, there's consequences in everything, you know, and I'm a true believer of that and karma is real. And no one ever has to, you know, fight their own battles. God sees all and knows all and he will take care of it. Um, so, yeah, this situation with Maui is just unbelievable. And I am lifting them up in prayer. And I pray that you all will stand with me and doing the same and lifting them up in prayer. Anywho, so when I got started on this recording, the number was 212. So it says, believe in the ideals and the revelations that you're receiving. Have faith in the power of your thoughts to positively alter your life. That is what the number 212 says. Okay. So, like I said, I have had so many things.
things appearing on my path within the last couple of days. Um, today, 817, uh, I took my notes at 1221. I had the, at 9.59 a.m., I had a changeable uh, metal, mental slug out on the patio of my home. 959 is a synchronized number uh, it, and it message carries continue to make whatever changes are necessary to allow yourself the time and energy to your divine purpose these changes in your in your mission are fully supported by spirit that's the message 959 has 1010 was the next um, synchronized number that showed up it says, keep your belief and thoughts mind and mindset focused upon your spirituality and your life purpose as you are now creating your own reality. Engage your thoughts in creative and positive endeavors and activities and use your personal skills and talents in a productive manner. Listen to the guidance from the angels in your intuition and serve your soul mission with passion and enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Then it was 11.01. That's the time that caught my attention. Um, and that 11.01's message now is a powerful time of personal development. Trust yourself in the angels, the um, universe and the universal energies and take direction and actions as guided. And then 11, 11. Take notice of your thoughts. It's as though at that very moment, whatever you're thinking, when you should see 11, 11, the universe is taking a screenshot of those thoughts. So be sure that you're thinking positive thoughts, things in which you want to manifest into your life. The good things, not the things you don't want, not the negative, not the, you know, things in which you worry upon but the things in which you want to manifest in your life the positive the thoughts the beliefs make sure they're aligned with what it what, what it is that you want to manifest because that is what you're doing right now we are in manifestation mode right now and everyone is manifesting quickly the things they want in reality so be mindful of your thoughts three 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 you have merged with the Ascendant Masters. They're working with you day and night on many levels. They love, guide, and protect you in all ways. Be creative, social, and communicate and in communication. Use your natural abilities and talents to empower yourself and uplift it and enlighten others as your light working abilities and life missions are to be utilized for the good of all. Keep a positive attitude about yourself and others and the world in general in order to manifest peace, love, and harmony. I can't even read that. Have faith in humanity as a whole in the future of our world. Live your truth, express yourself with clarity, purpose, and love, and be a positive light to others. Also, I had the toad and snail on my patio. Well, the toad was actually um, crossed my path twice this week. Um, and then the snail was on my patio. The toad was on the playground um, of my apartment complex and toads are of course of the ground so spirit is telling us to get grounded ground your energy um, no rushing the snail no rushing is necessary slow and steady gain patience um, also with toads fertility um, you're going through trans transformation and rebirth. Toads are also uh, in culture, in uh, some cultures, known to be good luck and bringing good fortune. 
Um, they indicate that you're very adaptable, uh, as well as snails. You know, snails, if you think about it, are grounded and on the ground, and they're slivering um, on the ground. And just think about all the different things around them that could take them out. Somebody could step on them, you know, because you... I mean, who's really going to recognize a snail all the time? You know, you could just be walking. Just so happen, I'm always consciously aware of what I'm doing. I'm always watching where I'm walking because I don't want to kill anything. Um, if I if I can um, prevent, if I'm able to do that, you know, I'm watching. I'm constantly watching my steps. Um, so the snails are, you know very vulnerable you know because they're very uh delicate little um things you know so they could be easily stepped on not seen whatever um then you have the frogs or the toads or you know um different things that perhaps could also uh eat the snail um so they're constantly you know having to maneuver and be adaptable and do whatever it is they need to do to survive and um that is one of the things that spirit is pointing out is that we have to be adaptable um flexible um we have to have thick skin you know we have to um know that beauty is also within you know outer appearance you know if you are materialistic or something like that uh, which in my opinion anyone that is being drawn to this channel um, has probably worked past most of that you know um, I know that I've been on this journey for quite some time and um, I've been focused upon you know just evolving me evolving as a person um, not no more concerned about the worldly um, things, worldly possessions, and so forth. Um, just more focused on myself, how I can become my most authentic self, how I can make a contribution to all, all of us, the collective, because we are all consciously connected. Um, and, you know, learning to love myself, you know, we've all gone through a lot of things in our lifetime, and uh, we've been you know, perhaps subjected to bullying and whatnot. And we lost value in who we were, you know, through indoctrinations and all of that, you know. Um, and so for the last several years, I have been really just going within, focusing upon myself, you know, improving myself, looking at my shadow sides, working on me. Um, and developing my skills and my abilities and just, you know, just really doing the work because I really want to be um, able to help others on this journey because this is not an easy walk. And, you know, if you're drawn to tarot readings and uh, divinations, like I, I use different tools. I use tarot cards. I use charms. I also, like I said, I get messages from the animals. So I, I study, you know, I study the animals that cross my path because I, I have so many encounters with so many animals and I have had that now going on for several years. So I study um, the energy that those animals carry to bring forth messages to the collective. Um, and, uh, yeah, my goal is to just be helpful, helpful, and to help all those out here that are on this journey and trying to, you know, grow spiritually, you know. Um, so the toad is bringing good luck and good fortune, you know, adaptability, uh, love yourself, it's also saying to know that you are going to have to have thick skin, you know, because you got to remember that a lot of us have been in doctrine and some people, especially the older generation, they are hard.
people to crack, you know. I don't care what you tell them. You could bring them, show them information, and they, they still refuse to do the research and verify um, information, you know. They, they want to stay stuck in the beliefs in which they've been indoctrinated in and um yeah they're they're pretty hard cookies to 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 crack so um you're gonna have to have thick skin on this journey with this spiritual walk because um you know you will be ostracized and you'll probably be called all kind of names you know i've lost so many friends who think i am a christian witch <laughs> so funny when i say that but anyway <laughs> Either way, in love and light, I release those friendships because I feel like, you know what? All I can do is bring you the information, share it with you, because that is how God would have me do and challenge you to verify what I'm saying. Prove me wrong. And when you can do that, I'm okay with it. However, no one seems to ever want to, doesn't want to do the work. You know, that's the problem, you know, and that's what they depend upon. They depend upon, you know, the masses being lazy, not wanting to do the research and verify information and just being able to go along with what they're fed. I have never been one of those people. I need to know why. It needs to make sense. It needs to resonate with me. Uh, if it doesn't, then I go down the rabbit hole and that rabbit hole runs deep. So all I'm saying, I challenge most to just verify what they've been taught, what they've learned over the course of their life, you know, come away from the television, you know, start picking up books, reading, edifying your spirit, your soul with spiritual books, you know, your spirit will guide you to things in which it's ready to understand, okay, and, it, and it's not going to allow you to go any further until you've embraced what you're already seeking you know it's a gradual thing because if you were to be awakened and all at once to the lies and deceits um and manipulation that has been uh, bestowed upon you throughout your lifetime yeah you probably possibly could have a mental breakdown because it's been a lot that we've been lied to our entire life, you know? So God knows that. So he brings you things slowly in order for you to do the legwork, verify, research, go down the rabbit hole and um, so forth. And then once you get that information and you sit with that for a while, you know, slowly but surely he'll start to bring more stuff forward to you for you to understand for you to look into for you to research and um whatnot always have an open mind never think that everything is one way because things are unfolding truths are being unveiled at this current moment we are in the Aquarian age. We just left the Piscean age, okay? Piscean is the age of illusion, living in illusions, uh, them keeping the wool pulled over your eyes, being deceptive, um, so forth. Now we're in the Aquarian age, and Aquarian age is unveiling deceit, lies. And it's not just with you know government and whatnot it's it's everything you know fake fake friends foe family whatever you know things will be unveiled to you you know and my advice is is that when those things happen just be really willing to release people in love and light don't hold on to any type of anger or resentment or anything like that because every person that is in your life is a catalyst a catalyst to get you on your path to your life purpose we all have a part to play here we are on a spiritual journey we're just beings here learning lessons 
evolving and we're ascending to higher levels. There are some that are more woke than I am and so forth. More woke than you are. And it's a gradual thing. We are all here. This place, this planet, Earth is our schooling. People are part of the lessons uh, in which we need to learn. We are all breaking generational curses. And those that are on this journey are chosen because you are ready and you are aware and God believes that you are able to do so for your family, for your lineage, you know. We are all on this spiritual journey. Some are aware, some aren't. We still got lots of slumbers. Our part is just, just to try to share the knowledge in which we get, however we get it. You know, everybody gets it differently. The knowledge we receive, our job is to share it and to bring this to our brothers and sisters. Now, that's all we can do. All we can do is share. What they do with it is their free will. Can't force feed it down their throat and make them do the research or want to do the, the work to find the truth. But God said, if you seek him, he will show you the truth, okay? Also, toads are known in magic and witchcraft, you know, um, and that can go either way. You know, some people believe that witchcraft is a bad thing, you know, because that's what you were taught. Me personally, I think that anything is how is the, int the intentions behind what is being done. Okay, um, a lot of different cultures use different things, different, use different um, uh, methods uh, to practice healing and, and so forth, which the masses may be believe is witchcraft, you know, it's what it was labeled as. Um, and I think it was done so intentionally uh, to deter people from looking into it and that's why i said you have to be open-minded i have studied a lot of cultural different um ways people see things whatever i'm very open-minded um and uh therefore i'm not going to be judgmental and you know i think that you can use you know christianity can also be used in a way to um in a negative way you know because if you're honest if you know you can think of people that you know that claim to be Christian. However, they're very judgmental, lawlistic, um, backbiting, uh, not very empathetic, not giving. I mean, and when they do, they do it in a way to show off that they're doing something, you know. Why is it that you need to bring attention to the things in which you're doing for others? You know, God says do things secretly without having to share what you're doing for others you know he, he's the only one that needs to know you know um so i think a lot of things as far as religion and all that um indoctrinations and all of that um yeah i think they all have positive and negative you know um however you just sit with that and then you go within and say okay God you know I know for me I don't, I don't want to be judgmental I don't want to judge anyone I don't want to um, not have empathy for my brothers and sisters I don't want to you know think that I am better than anyone we are all alike we all put our pants on the same way one leg at a time um, I just take that and I try to say, okay, let me make sure that I'm not reflecting that out, you know. And I'm sure in my younger years, I, I did. You know, I was a hardcore Christian. I went to school, uh, wanted to be a 
a Christian um, a counselor. You know, I went to school for that and all that, and then, you know, kind of got away from that because none of it was resonating. You know, when I was going to school, uh, I was asking the professors to make it make sense and they really couldn't. And that kind of put me on another trajectory where I started to do my own research. I was questioning everything I was learning. I was like, what? None of this is resonating with me. And I just started to go on my own to do research and it took me down a whole, whole long rabbit hole of different things to different cultures and different religions and you know just opened my whole world and um i'm grateful for that you know it awakened me it awakened me to um really do my own research i cannot always take what someone is giving me or teaching me and think that that's it I have to verify research and all that and I just suggest that you do that as well um, also spiritual cleansing and purity and confidence so you know at this time you need to be trying your hardest to edify yourself with healthy foods organic as most you know if possible organic if you can you know everybody can't afford to eat organically um and all i can say is that i don't care what you eat what you put in your mouth pray over it before you do so ask for god to you know cleanse and purify that what you're eating um and whatnot because right now they are targeting us through our food whether you believe that or not they are. It's a lot of things in our food that are not healthy for us, and especially processed foods. If you can, try to steer away from processed foods as much as possible. Drink plenty of water um, and just be mindful of what you're watching. It's like these eyes are to your spirit and you want to be watching things that's going to be uplifting you. If you're watching television. I don't watch tele television at all. I am the type of person, I'm always out in nature, you know, that's what I do. I, I love getting out in nature and just capturing uh, great photos and videos of different things. So I get a lot of inspirations for my paintings from nature. Um, and then, you know, if you can sustain from television, I would suggest you do that because mostly any and everything that's on television is negative and it's not really helping uh, you. You want to be edifying your, your spirit, you know, you want to be lifting up your vibration because at this time, everything that is going on all with all of us, that's energy. It is contributing to the collective in a whole and we need to be uplifted as much as possible. So sustain from television. If you can, listen to affirmations and frequencies to lift up your spirit. Listen to music. I love music. Um, mostly old school music is my preference. However, I do like uh, jazz as well and instrumental. So if you can do that, I love like I said, I love to paint. That's another way in how I keep my spirits uplifted, you know, painting um, and so forth. Uh, it's another thing. We're going to pull a card or two. This is my soul lesson and soul purpose oracle cards. And ask spirit. God, our spirit guides, ancestors, what is the message you say for us today? On this journey, Holy Spirit, ancestors, archangels, ascended masters, all those that are currently present with us today on this journey. What's the message for the collective? Holy Spirit, ancestors, archangels, spirit guides, gods, goddesses. Ascendant Masters, what is the message the collective need to hear today on the spiritual journey? Show me. And if you want to know why I don't do a lot of love readings, 
on my channel is because I feel like there's so many on here that, that that's all they focus on is relationships with the significant other. And right now, because I'm not uh, it, involved with anyone, I haven't even considered being involved with another person because I'm so focused upon working on myself. Um, I just don't feel guided to do love readings. Hold on. That, that blew out. What is it? Begin to explore. Begin to explore. Number two, begin to explore. Spirit is saying, you know, whatever it is that you are drawn to at this present time, God is telling you to begin to explore. I am considering returning to school. You know, and I changed my major to, um, what is it called? Anthropology. That's the study of cultures and different religions. So, in ancient times. So, I'm receiving this. Begin to explore. So, if you are guided or if you are finding yourself drawn to certain things, um, stick with it. Keep exploring. You know, dig deep. And it is going to open your mind. That's all I can say. I can't, I can't um, deter you from that. Keep exploring. It's going to broaden your knowledge and, and bring you wisdom. You know, we have uh, ancient uh, wisdom that's dormant in our in our DNA. And at this current time, it's all being awakened. And spirit is telling us to just keep exploring. Explore any and everything that you feel drawn to. You're going to learn a great deal of stuff from that exploration. Accept what is dying. Accept what is dying. Anything that is leaving your life, accept that. Release it in love and light. Let it go. Everyone has lessons they need to gain. And sometimes you just have to allow that to happen. Trust that everything that is happening is happening for a reason. And that that situation has to, that person, situation, whatever, has to be allowed to be let go. Because they have to go on their journey and you have to go on yours. So accept what is dying. That's 42. Holy Spirit, ancestors, archangels, is there any of There we go. And then it says, do all things in moderation. In moderation. If you're doing um, anything um, as far as... Um, As far as your um, diet goes, everything should be done in moderation. You know, don't overindulge in anything, especially not anything that is not um, good for you. Because, you know, if you're aware of this, you know, mostly leafy green things are uh, edifying to our body. And if you pay attention to your body, once you eat certain things, you will start to notice your energy level. So if you are one who likes, say, for instance, soul food, I don't know. I'm just using this as an example. And you like to eat the soul food. I love soul food myself personally. However, I don't eat meat anymore. Um, but I still will eat like sides. I love like greens and mac and cheese and candy yams and all of that. But I notice immediately after I eat that kind of food, heavy food, I get tired and I'm exhausted. Sometimes I have to go lay down and take a nap. That's depleting my energy. That's not what I want. However, when I eat 
like vegetables. I'll get me a hearty salad for lunch or whatever. That in turn lifts up my energy. I feel more energetic. I'm ready to walk, get out in nature, whatever. Everything in moderation. If you don't have access to, like I said, the healthier stuff, the organic, and you're just eating, you know, what you have access to and what's available in your pantry or whatever. And it may be on a heavier um, density, which is causing you to be tired, whatever. If you're eating those types of things, eat it in moderation. You know, certain things such as uh, sugars and um, what do you call that? Processed stuff. All those types of things that are not edifying for us. Uh, actually not good for our health. Um, and you just want to be mindful not to overindulge in those things. I mean, I know some people just cannot afford with everything that is going on around us with this inflation and everything cannot just afford to eat organic all the time or can't. I mean, because truthfully, I know you know this, it's cheaper to eat unhealthy than it is healthy because to eat healthy is expensive. And that in itself should show you that the reason it's that way is because they they make it that way intentionally they want to keep us in this state of low vibrational energy you know that's why they they make it so hard and challenging for you to be able to afford the healthier foods because the pay is you know that you may be receiving for your compensation for work is not adequate to buy the healthier stuff you know you have a family and you have to buy accordingly to the size of the family i get it trust me i can't eat healthy all the time either and i'm like oh my goodness i don't want to make poor decisions um in my food selections however i have to eat what i can afford i mean i, I don't want to starve to death but when i do that i just try to eat in moderation i try to be mindful not to overindulge in those um foods or whatnot so all i'm saying it's just be mindful. Eat any and all things and anything. It doesn't even have to be food. It could be anything. Do with it. Do it within the uh, moderation. You know, moderation and over. Like I just like I explained to you how God brings things to us on the spiritual realm when we're talking about the awakening spiritually. He does it moderately because to do it all at once. It would be mind blowing and may cause someone to go into psychosis. So, in all things, even when you're deep diving and looking into things, for me, when I first started my awakening and I start deep diving into um, spiritual stuff um, in which I was being drawn to, it literally was shaking me to my core. I was like, man, this is mind blowing. Like, I was just, it had me questioning everything, you know, and some days I would have some really tough days um, sorting through it all and absorbing it and trying to make it make sense. So even with your spiritual deep diving, do that in moderation. If it becomes too overwhelming and too much information, um, for you just take some steps back and uh, just sit with what you just gained until it's resonated with you and you've made sense of it because you don't want to uh, put yourself in that type of situation where it could possibly cause you to have a psychosis breakdown or something like that okay moderation moderation i see we can do soul's journey soul's journey holy spirit my ancestors archangels spirit guides all of those that are currently present with us what do we need to hear on this spiritual journey today collective. What is the message for us today on this spiritual
message today oh, on this journey. Show me. Ooh, that's too many spirits. I only want one card. Holy Spirit. Ancestors. Archangels. What is the message today for the collective on this journey? Show me. Holy Spirit. Ancestors. What is the message today? Envy, envy. I am the same as everybody, but with different challenges. Remember what I said? There's no need to be envious of no one. And because you are already evolved in a, on your spiritual journey, and you are consciously aware of that, you know, everyone is here for a reason. We all have a divine purpose. And there is no need to be envious. Everyone has different challenges. Everyone deal with things differently and, you know, whatnot. You don't have to be in, in no, no, no rush through this spiritual journey. You don't have to feel a, a particular kind of way when you're releasing people. Just release them in love and light. You know, release them and know that there is a reason to the separation. You know, nothing is coincidental. Everything that happens to you is for you, for your betterment, for your good. And that's how you should see things and release the people and, 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 and try to be as detached from any and everything as you can be. Because people come and go in life. Friendships come and go in life. And you just have to go with the flow and trust that whatever is happening is for your betterment. That God's hand is in everything with pertaining to your life. That's it. Trust that. What should those be surrendering to Holy Spirit? Ancestors. What should the collective be surrendering to Holy Spirit? Ancestors or angels? Spirit guides. What should the collective be surrendering to? Show me. Holy Spirit ancestors, what should the collective be surrendering to? Holy Spirit ancestors, masters. Ascendant masters. There we go. We got one. Surrender to passion. It says, get out of your head and feel the fire in your belly. Focus on the people or activities that ignite your passion and let it flow. So whatever's in your belly that you are, you know, that may be leading you down a path or drawing, drawing you to something particular, go with that. If you are passionate about it, go with it. There's something there. God has you on that path. Trust that. Surrender to that. It's going to open so many doors for you. There's no coincidence in this life. God is the driver of all of us. You know, all of us. He is He's, he's in the driver's seat of all of us. He is the uh, pilot for the speed. Let me get my um, other cards to pull a couple of angel numbers for us today and see what they have. Angel messages. We're not going to be on here much longer. Almost at an hour. Jeez. These are the angel number messages. See what angel numbers come up for us today. Holy Spirit, Ancestors, Archangels. What messages do you have for the collective today? Call upon the spirit guides, ancestors, archangels, all those that are currently present with you today. What messages for the collective? Holy Spirit, ancestors, archangels, what are the. Ooh, that's okay, we're going to go with it. 1212. 
Stay focused on your best possible future and remain optimistic throughout the entire journey. Your angels are right behind you as you turn your dreams into reality. I am focused. Zero, zero, zero. I am a creator. Hmm. Synchronized number. I can't make this up. You are with you are one with the creator and there are no limits to what you can achieve. You have the ability to create something new and incredible in your lifetime here on earth. I am a creator. I am a creator. 1212, 000, 000, and then 88. I am wealthy. You are on the cusp of a prosperous and abundant spiritual life. You will find number numerous opportunities for success and achievement all of which bring financial and material abundance into your life i am wealthy so there is something in you that you need to bring forth and whatever it is if it's the the knowledge in which you're gaining on your spiritual journey that you've been on on this awakening and how you deliver it that is all you need to do is go with that. If that's your passion, if that's what you're drawn to, if that's what you find yourself uh, wanting to learn more about on a day-to-day -day basis, like I be digging deep. I be like, Ugh, I get lost in this stuff for hours and hours and hours. So I can only imagine that you all are having that same desire, that passion, that fire burning within you to know more, to understand more on this journey. That is what you have to bring forth. That's the stuff God wants us to share with our brothers and sisters. How you do it is up to you. Just be creative. How can you bring these messages? Maybe you don't want to use social media. Maybe you don't want to be on YouTube. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to share it with those that come in direct contact with you, that cross your path, whether it's friends, family, or just people, period, you know, that walk up to you. You know, most people that are very spiritual are empaths and they are um, constantly approached by people who want to share their life story with them because they can see and feel your energy. They can see that you have a pure heart, a good heart, and they, they're wanting to share things with you because they feel led to do so and they feel comfortable to do so because they can feel that. However you share what you're learning just choose to be creative in doing that and put all your passion in that to bring forth that to others to the collective to your family friends or whatnot that is the messages from spirit he just wants you to be your authentic self and the wisdom in which you've gained on this journey he just wants you to share and bring enlightenment to all your brothers and sisters anyone that you cross your path and however way you choose to do so and in that i pray that this message has brought you some upliftment some encouragement and it empowers you to continue on this journey and trust that there are no coincidences if you are on this journey it's because you were chosen and to stay the course, there are things that are going to be unveiled to all of us that is going to be mind-blowing, that is going to, you know, lead us on the path in which we are all going down anyway. Because we're all ascending to our authentic being who God created us to be. I pray that if you feel led to do so, that you would like the video. If you feel led to do so, that you would share the video. If you would like to become a part of my family, a part of my soul tribe, subscribe, share my videos, and um, let's keep growing. That's it. You know, I just want to be a part of my soul tribe. I just want to help all my brothers and sisters, those on this path as much as I possibly can and connect with you all. If you feel led to do so, you can send me an email. Um, let's connect. Let's see how we can connect. You know, if it's either through here, you know, I can, um, you know, put my email in my community page. I put a lot of stuff over there, you know, as far as pictures, videos in which 
uh, I have these encounters with these animals and I share like a snippet of what the message carried, you know, the, the, the message carried by that animal. I put that in my community page and whatnot. And let's figure out a way to connect. Let's, let's figure out a, a way to continue to grow, you know. Anyway, I pray that you all have a fabulous, fabulous Thursday and that this has empowered you in some kind of way. And until next time, smooches. Bye-bye.